Last time on Dragon Ball Z. Tails? Yeah. Okay, goodbye, Malkador. I'm Isander. And I am Coda. And today we're going to continue the descent into the custodies. The custodies. The best of the best, baby. Before we get into that, though, the poll options are the White Scars, Raven Guard, and Malkador. So you sound off by sounding off in the comments. That's how you get these videos made. And as always, for a bonus episode, a bunch of other perks. And to help us keep this show running, head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda where we have the best Patreon in the business. We are actually halfway to the... I think we are halfway to the 10,000. Are we halfway to the 10,000? I 10, think we are halfway to the 10,000. God damn. Yeah, we almost have our own, we <laughs> almost have our own retinue of custodies. Look oh at God. us. <laughs> Look at us. Yeah, so thank you for that. As always, you know, do the stuff the machine god likes. You know, like, comment, subscribe, that stuff. And let's get right into it. Custodies rabbit hole. Yeah, oh my god, it's, it's long. It's it's very, it's like last week, the or a few weeks ago, the, the problem was girth, just sheer volume of fire. Again, this time it's just going to be length. It's just the depth of these guys. It's, okay. It's... I mean, they're the third tallest people in the Imperium. It's, it's, it's a length issue. There, there's a height chart that's quasi-canon, and it's like, the Emperor, uh, <laughs> Magnus, Vulcan, the rest of the Primarchs, and then the Custodes. But if you group all the Primarchs together, then it's just, you know, Emperor, Primarchs. It, it's a thing. People in 40k really care about height because it does kind of matter. Because, no, my Primarch's looking down on your Primarch. It, it's a fun game. You know, it's funny people rag on the orcs for going, oh yeah, the biggest one is actually the leader in the hierarchy when the humans are the exact same. Why do you think the orcs respect the emperor? He's the biggest Humie! He's the biggest Humie and he's running things! An orc sees that makes total sense. Listen, guys. Listen, guys. <laughs> I get it. Imperium this. Imperium that. They're the orcs, dude. Yeah. No, They're he's... the orcs, but like... Not green. To the orcs, they look at the the emperor, custodies, and primarchs, and they go, "Oh, that makes sense. Oh, oh, now that's a, that's a leadership structure right there, baby." <laughs> they look at an imperial navy ship with everyone about the same size, but one guy's in charge. What? That guy's five ten. <laughs> He's not even my shin. What? Oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, no, the orc. The four four guy in charge. My God. Yeah, it, it, yeah. The orc 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 hierarchy is very fun, and the imperium likes to pretend it's above it, but. Every mover and shaker in the Imperium. Here, okay, here's the real thing. If you want to matter in the Imperium, your height has to have been debated at one point. Even the most important guardsmen have had their height debated. I'm not joking. So if your height's being debated, honestly, I think this applies to real life too. If your height's being debated in real life, you've made it. You've done. You're do you think, important. Do you think? Do you think? Um, do you think they send every Primarch to Mogwarts to to get them in prime Don't leadership condition? Date this video that hard. <laughs> I refuse. We're gonna move on. But yeah, no, it's. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Anyway, they are the exact opposite of pretty much everything you're gonna see in the Imperium. Because if you haven't noticed, okay. To be fair to the Imperium. They do win through strategic might occasionally. However, it's mostly a lot of the time it's sundering firepower. How much? How much d can we drop on the table? It's it's you cannot compete with our manufacturing might. It's a very solid tactic that does in fact work because, as it turns out, not a lot of factions can compete with a million worlds worth of just sheer. I won't say infrastructure because that's giving the Imperium too much credit. But it works. I will call it. It stamps out tanks and guns and unab bodies. Unabated manufacturing. That's oh, what I'll call it. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, they're boiling oceans away at some point. Mm -hmm. But the custodies are the exception to that rule. Because even if you think of like your average guardsman, you see them in pretty much every engagement. I mean, you look at any bit of imperial art, and if you don't see a guardsman, first of all, oh, it's bad. Let me just tell you right now, if you if you ever see a guardsman, they're the other end of the spectrum where, oh, that's a really bad fight. Why are there no <laughs> humans there? It's a really bad fight, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the space marines who are rarer than guardsmen. That you, will, you probably, your average guardsman, probably will never see a space marine, and that's a good thing for them. However, there's still enough space marines to be at every important fight. There's still enough space marines to have 101 books written about them, and there's still enough space marines for them to dominate most of the art. So, while they're rare from our perspective, us looking in, they're kind of not that rare. Yeah. They're, they're kind of everywhere. 
And then there's the Grey Knights, who are even rarer than Space Marines. These guys, I'll be honest, even for us, we don't see them frequently. That you don't, if you see the Grey Knights, it's a real problem for everyone involved. Yeah, really, it, really. There's rare. a problem. There's a problem. Problem happening at your doorstep. And now we're reaching the other end of the spectrum, the Custodes. Where if you see them at a fight, oh, it's bad. It's bad, bad. If, if you even see a single Custodes deployed somewhere, that fight. That fight's odds are so much worse. Listen, everything else has happened. The custodians are like, <laughs> this is the last, last yeah, resort. No. The, the Imperium is described as having a million worlds, which is underselling it if it's the actual Milky Way, because there are billions of planets. And of those millions of worlds, there are trillions of souls. People die all all the time. It does not matter. It's you. Your average Joe is a rounding error. Even to some extent, some space marine deaths are acceptable. Yeah. There are only 10,000 custodies. Oh. That's it. In a world, in a universe with trillions of, uh, untold trillions of souls. Well, I mean, that is literally the tagline. Yeah, is you are trillions. You are a man among trillions of un, untold. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's, it's, it's Billions die every day. Billions. Just 10,000 custodians? 10,000 with the important job of keeping the emperor alive-ish Ish. Ish. on that throne. And and again, it's not even like, oh, we're keeping him alive from threats within. It's the devil himself wants him dead. Yeah. The devil who can appear at our doorstep wants him dead. And has shown that, that he can appear at our doorstep. Yeah, it's that's the last... <laughs> that's the last line of defense when it comes to things in the Imperium. And it... It's, again, again, I can't undersell them because you have to remember, this is the Imperium. It's not just, hey, we're going to send guardsmen over there to gum up that tank's treads. It's, we will destroy hundreds of worlds in a line just to create a dead zone to stop the Tyranids <laughs> for a little bit. And these, relatively speaking, like 10 dudes are who they count on at the end of the day. These guys have the most important shtick because I'll be honest, if the Emperor goes... It's Jover. It's it's kind of it. It's kind of Jover. It's kind of it for the entire Imperium. <laughs> they have no way to navigate. They have no figurehead at the center of it all. And immediate, I won't say power vacuum because it's not like he's doing much ruling, but a lot of the Imperium is going to suddenly be fighting a lot of things all at once. Yep. So let's say your class takes a field trip to Earth. And you want to see one of these custodies. Where, where, would you, where would you go about finding one of these? And the answer is, honest to God, you'd probably just be walking around taking pictures, avoiding the obviously heavily guarded room. And you see these about nine foot tall statues everywhere that are perfectly stationary until something moves too close. And then something the size of a steel beam gets swung at it. And then it goes back. It's They are imperceptibly fast to if a, if a custodies is bearing down on a human being. Man, <laughs> it's over so fast. I mean, I think we've mentioned this before. Uh, the custodies, the the same human dread or transhuman dread that space marines give humans, the custodies give to space marines. The gap is the same where your average person will see a space marine and, oh, God, I stand no chance against that. A space marine will see a custodies and go, oh, God, I don't stand a chance against that. It's so not think about it. That gap is probably doubled, if not quadrupled mm -hmm. for a human being. And a big reason for that is because the space marines are i'm not going to say mass produced efficiently because man are they not sometimes but they are you can you can i mean the iron warriors have made a conveyor belt for space marines it's disgusting it's gross but they have <laughs> so it is possible you can stamp them out like guns you cannot really do that with the custodies they're borderline handmade that's why there's so few of them. It takes a lot of time to make one. They, they need to be hand sculpted. You need to get the abs just right or it doesn't look right. Yeah, it, it doesn't bad. perfectly symmetrical. That's mm -hmm. that's how that's why it takes them so long. And it's not just they're being built perfectly to be the most muscular and powerful beings possible, but these are beings that are supposed to be able to at least mentally Maybe not surpass the emperor, but you know, keep up with him. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of times during well, back when he was still you know moving around and not a skeleton on a beanbag chair, <laughs> uh, he would he would speak to them. He they would kind of be his confidants at times. He would run ideas by them, right? And he, this these were people he trusted at the end of the day with. Okay, here's the thing: he trusted them with his safety in a sense. It is still the emperor. He's gonna look at you and you're gonna burn to death. So his safety is not. 
really that at risk. However, it's still something that this is something I don't want to think about. I will let these guys handle it, and I trust them enough to do that. And that's a huge deal. Yeah, that's a huge deal for somebody who's such a controlling human being. They handcrafted their kids to be good at something different, and then doubled up on that just in case some of them wound up bad. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's a he's a bit of a control freak. For him to relax and go, yeah, you can deal with the home security. It, it speaks volumes for these of guys. Of how much he trusted them. Yeah, he, the, these guys are. The, he would go on a crusade and like, oh, well, what do you think about that one? I, I think I handled that fairly give me, well. Give me some feedback. And, be, and also because these guys are long living too. They they are custodians who've been around since the heresy. They remember it. They were they're, there. They're, if I remember correctly, they're custodians that have been around since the Great Crusade. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a few like that. And so you, if you think about that level of length, for, n- nobody lives that long. So the, the kind of perspective that the custodians and the emperor and his kids have is it, it, it's pretty much just them who can share in that. And so it's it's this very insulating thing where you can't really relate to your common man anymore because I've been alive for 10,000 years of course I can't relate to you. But hey, here are these warrior guys who I can relate to, at least somewhat. Maybe they can't, you know, beat me, but it's, it's as close as I'm going to get, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's as close as I'm going to get. <laughs> I will take what I can get. Because at the end of the day, I mean, everybody needs somebody to talk to, dude. You can't just, can't just sit there staring, handcrafting your kids. Humans are social creatures, and even if you're a weird warp weapon, you're still human-ish. Yeah. Exactly. And if you look at the background of any of the Emperor's art, well, except for that last one. <laughs> except for that last one. Uh, if you look at the background for most of the Emperor's art, you will see golden figures in the background, and that's just the custodians. They were almost always around him, and it wasn't just he trusted them with his own personal safety. He trusted them on things he couldn't be there to oversee. Because, again, a bit of a control freak. <laughs> so when when his kids decided to start doing some sketchy stuff, like, for example, Lorgar starting a whole televangelist run, um, it was Custodes he sent to make sure that he wouldn't do that. Huh. He sent, he sent about 15 aboard the ship with Lorgar just watching him, which I can't imagine how weird that must be. Can you imagine that? Starting a church and then the president himself steps down and says, no, stop that, never stop, again. Stop. And then the Secret Service is following they you follow forever. You for the rest of your life. You have to know what's going on. That had that had to have made things worse. <laughs> <laughs> and when um, the emperor, because the space marines were not, to the first time he tried the whole super soldier thing. He tried it before. Uh, we haven't spoken about these guys at all. Uh, they're called the Thunder Warriors. The th- I think of... Thinks think of- I've heard of I've heard that name. Think the alpha version of Space Marines. Mm-hmm. It's the first tool he used to get everything in line. However, not as stable as Space mm-hmm. Marines, and that's saying a lot because they're Space Marines. They're not exactly stable. Half of them did turn to chaos. These these are like <laughs> the Thunder Warriors were like the Space Marines if they were like more unhinged, right? It, yeah, it's it's not great. They deserve an episode to themselves. R- regardless, the Emperor could have these guys running around. The Emperor can have these guys running around. However, how do you retire super soldiers who are very homicidal? <laughs> the answer is you send better super soldiers after them. <laughs> so th- they, they encountered the custodies very quickly. You fight and, fire with fire. And man, because Space Marines, I, I, ooh, I could get in trouble for this one. I think Space Marines are superior to Thunder Warriors in most ways. And I so... Mean, they're a little bit more hinged. A they little. have a, they have a brain on their shoulders. And so, if you think about the gap between a space marine and a custodies, can you imagine the gulf between a custodies and? A, can you imagine? Oh, I've just done my job with the emperor. Oh, you know, I'm enjoying the the whole murder thing very much, but it's fine. It's whatever. And then Captain America himself shows up. Captain America, clad in gold, shows up and <laughs> proceeds to eviscerate you faster than you can even piece that together. It's not great. And also, when uh, they, because they, they did, when Horus decided to go insane and split the Imperium in half, taking half his brothers and their space marines with them, uh, there, it was spitballed for a bit there. Hey, what if we just assassinate him? You won't guess who was tasked with that gig. <laughs> it was the custodians who had to put together the team. The, the, come on, these guys, these guys are. If the Emperor himself couldn't be there and Malkador himself couldn't be there, the custodians were there. Every single time. Every single time. When the orcs were handing it to three of his kids, you won't guess who he sent. 
the custodies. And it was a huge war too. It was it was big enough for the emperor himself to show up too. It was it was it was it was, it was one of those ones where if we don't stop this now, it's a permanent problem. It, it, it's over. It's it, over. Yeah, exactly. So the emperor himself did show up there, but he did first send the custodies. However, it's impossible to miss the fact that modern day emperor is not really a mover and shaker. <laughs> it's in fact the opposite of that. He's very stationary. And nowadays their gig is they don't really get to do that as much anymore. They don't get to be deployed to just observe things or deployed to turn the tide of battles. Really, a lot of their gig is guard that lighthouse. <laughs> In a perpetual state of survivor's guilt because they had one job and they failed it in the worst way <laughs> imaginable. <laughs> they had a pass fail grade and they just failed. Yeah, hard. That's it. They hard failed. The paper caught fire. Mm -hmm. It's not great. <laughs> it's actually, fun fact, nowadays it was retconned to um, they just wear dark cloaks. Because, you know, they're in mourning for the emperor and have been for quite a while. But if I remember correctly, this is really old, dubiously canon lore. They had, they, it was said that they had abandoned their armor, which is where the whole, like, oiled custodies comes from. The oiled shirtless custodies running around. Because, oh God, he's died. Quick, abandon all your armor. We don't deserve this. Yeah, it, it's... It we does. must strut about nude I mean, to the be, Imperial to Palace. To be fair, what a flex that is that, like, oh, we failed our job so badly, we don't deserve to be protected. However, I still won't die for the next 10,000 years. I have abandoned my outright bulletproof armor. It still will not make a difference for you. You are still going to lose to me. <laughs> it's like Mike Tyson showing up with both hands tied behind his back, and he wins a boxing match. How is that even possible? With teeth. Okay, well, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> For the next 10,000 years, that's pretty much all they did. Putts about the Imperial Palace. A few times they left here and there. Things getting too close to Earth. A few secret missions here and there, but nowhere near the level of... It, was, it was mostly strutting about oiled... Sure. Oiled up and naked sure. throughout the Imperial sure, Palace. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> and um, modern 40K has changed a lot, actually. Uh, Gilliman has decided to wake up finally. Uh, things are not going great for the Imperium. The galaxy's ripped in half. Chaos is having a great time. And Earth itself was invaded, which does not happen often. And man, oh man, do the custodians not like that. <laughs> so for a lot of good reasons, they are now able to go do things again. And that's huge because they can finally... It's These are the Imperium's best warriors. And it has always chafed quite a few people that their job is just to stand around and guard just a stand light. around. Guard. And to be fair, it's a very important lighthouse. If make, that goes. make sure the corpse doesn't move, please. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they do not tend... You, you For you to see all 10,000 doing something at the same time, it's really... It's got to be bad. It's, that is the last, last resort. Yeah, like, that's, we're talking another Horus heresy is happening, and, like... The 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 now in a chair emperor is about to get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Marked. Come yeah. On. No. The, you you can't afford to lose these guys because they are. It's not like space marines where they're picked up uh, from like teenage years and then training and then a bunch of organs and then oh did you make it through all that congratulations you're space marine. <laughs> um, it starts from birth with the custodies and they they there's quite a few kids who are given to them and not all of them pass the tweaking that goes into making a custodies. And that's because it's it's not just, oh, we shoved a second heart, third lung into you. It's, we've modified your genes. To, like, custodians don't have spare hearts. They just have the one? If you look, if you, you know, if you were to um, vivisect the custodies, same organs. Huh. Just big, I assume. I mean, yeah, it's just, he's nine feet tall, so, yeah, his lungs are huge. But, yeah, if, if I remember correctly, yeah, it's just the same organs, but it's... It's the best possible. It's the best possible a human being can be before they are no longer human. Whereas space marines are kind of just what is the most we can do to the human frame to make it a weapon mm -hmm. without it keeling over and dying. And they discovered quite a bit, actually. Spare heart, spare lung, you know, it's spit acid, eat the brains and remember memories. There's a lot space marines can do. and it, They don't talk about it anymore. Yeah, the, 
some of it they do, some of them they don't. It depends, but Castilla. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see an ability in the uh, Space Marine Two, mm-hmm. where uh, Cato Sicarius just uh, uh, spits at the Tyranids, and then they dissolve into acid. Yeah, that <laughs> I want to see this happen. That would piss off Tyranid players really badly. <laughs> that would that would aggravate them. However, it's not. They don't. They don't need all the extra hearts, all the spare. Um, because space friends have a lot going on under the hood, like quite a bit going on under the hood. I mean, they don't. Lot, it's been shoved under there. Yeah, it's like, they they don't. It's it's almost like how Primarchs are the most stable variation of that, where it's like this is the most we can shove into a human body, and then now it's amped to its logical extreme. So this is the 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 perf- the you can't get better unless you're the emperor, pretty much. It's like custodies are min maxed people. Uh. uh Space Marines are augmented people, mm-hmm. and then Primarchs are like augmented people that that they then min max that they've then taken to their maximum. Yes, and for various tasks too. Uh, they, this has given them a stupendous amount of power, because uh, there's a story where the reason you won't see more than a thousand of these guys is because you really won't need more than a thousand of these guys. Um, six of them have beaten a million Tyranids. I'll be fair. <laughs> Games Workshop's terrible with numbers sometimes, but this is the Custodes episode, so we're going to go with the biggest one. Yeah. So six to one million. Jesus. So you can do the math on that to find out what one Custodes is worth. And, and I'll a be. Lot. Yeah. And, a and, lot. And it wasn't just in raw combat, too. They were out thinking them, they were constantly moving them into traps. And st- it's, it's pretty cool stuff. So the Custodes come out and on top in very, very numerous ways. It's not, it's not just. Might makes right. I am stronger and faster. I will beat you. Though that does happen it, a lot of the time. It's I've out. Uh, I am ten steps ahead of you, and you have lost. There is no way you stand a chance against me. And so you know the way. Sometimes people get upset occasionally when Space Marines win everything they get into ever ever. Yeah. Uh, because the books are it's a Space Marine book. It's of course, they're going to beat everything they go into. It's the main character. In in canon, the custodians get that treatment. The administrators of the Imperium, because, when, when, you know, you deploy something, you need to jot down, oh, Ultramarines headed here for this battle, cool. And that's how it's usually recorded. Ultramarines, going to Mars for a brawl. Results, TBD. And then they wait, and then they log it. The Custodes, Custodes, going to Mars, victory. <laughs> they don't wait. They, they, they just don't, write it down. They like, just log the number. We sent, we sent the custodians there. It's a win. Yeah, it doesn't they, matter. They, they have won. As far as, the administ- as far as the Imperium is concerned, if you're sending the custodians, it's victory. It's guaranteed every single time. And so it's also why, I, again, I don't think every faction has bumped into the custodians because not every faction has been enough of a threat yet. But they, they if, if they show up, oh boy, oh boy, because that, that genetic modification is really just the beginning of it. Again, they have these massive, massive, incredibly heavy weapons that are gene locked to them, so they can't be used by anyone else. If anybody else could pick them up. Yeah, exactly. If, if you could even lift the thing, that'd be problem <laughs> number one. And then problem number two is the thing holding that weapon is wearing. If you'll notice, their armor and the Emperor's armor is the same shade of gold. <laughs> it's because it's the same stuff. The same stuff. And so you have the best a human being, the literal best a human being can be. There is no way for a human being to surpass the custodies unless some shenanigans get involved. I'm talking the warp or spare organs. That is it. As far as default humans go, there is nothing that surpasses a custodies. And it's clad in the best armor and the best weaponry that the Imperium can afford. And you begin to see why there's only 10,000 of these guys. They're not cheap. I mean, every single one has a weapon that's locked to them forever. That means every single one needs a new, very expensive weapon to manufacture, a new, perfectly fitted set of armor. And the custodies are not immortal. They're very long-lived, but they're not immortal. Uh, a A lot of the time, a space marine will notice, oh, I'm not as fast as I used to be. Oh, well, doesn't matter. I'm still leagues faster than you. And... (laughs) It, it works on most things. The custodians will notice, hmm, I did that half a second slower. Here's my weapon I retire. They understand the importance of their job. I can't be half a second slow at my gig. That half a second could mean the emperor dies again. I need to be the best of the best of the best of the best. Yes, yes. The, the, the space marines are the emperor's finest 
weapons. And they are, or really the finest warriors clad in the best weapons and armor. We all know the speech, right? But that's what it is at the end of the day. The Space Marines are supposed to, you're supposed to be able to make quite a few of them quite quickly and put them in pretty much the same thing, you know? Like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, oh, that Space Marine died. Get the armor off him. It's still usable. <laughs> it's still usable. Sel- salvage the armor. With the custod- Maybe stick him in a dreadnought, too, if we still have his torso and head. With the custodies, their armor has all of their names and deeds carved into it. Their weapon is genetically locked to them. It's like a, it's like a jersey, almost. You retire that number. It can't be used again. <laughs> It, it, you, there are certain it's there are certain times you see a player so stupendously good at a sport. Yeah, nobody's gonna have that number again. I'm sorry, because nobody's ever gonna beat this guy. We have to do something, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with the custodies. Of whoa, okay, nobody's ever gonna match that. Put <laughs> put it in a glass case and mount it up top with the rest of those bad boys. <laughs> it's the same thing. They're so much fun the only things and again i cannot stress this enough there are two things in the imperium that are outright superior to them and it's the emperor who's out and the primarchs who are mostly running about doing their own thing right now that's it the inquisition technically could order a custodies around (laughs) technically but the inquisitors are also not idiots the, 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 the Inquisition has a lot of power on paper, but it's tempered by common sense. They can order... It's a hard fact. They can order Space Marines around. Will they live to see those orders fulfilled is not a hard fact. They are smart enough to know that they should probably ask nicely instead of demanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's why a lot of the time you will see Inquisitors be polite to people who they could who could kill them in an instant they will say please and thank you or alternatively you know i'm gonna have a really good reason before i try and order the 10 foot tall gold guy around (laughs) that's not all the time because there are some inquisitors who have threatened custodies which thank goodness the custodies are stable and rather intelligent so they can they can plan out what would happen if I just killed you in an instant, <laughs> and they know it's not worth it, but man, could they just kill you in an instant. If you meet the wrong custodies, and you order around the wrong custodies like that. No, again, it's not as bad as Space Marines. These guys are intelligent. They're very smart. They understand I'm not just a custodies. I'm a reflection on all of the custodies. It's, because you see the Space Marines, they have ranks, like any military. There, there's... Uh, of course, they outrank pretty much every human. You know, every, every guardsman defers to Space Marines on the reg pretty much but with the custodies there's no hierarchy like there's a little bit of a hierarchy there's a little bit but it's a pretty flat kind of line because they're all each one has no equal each one has no equal so they all understand no we are the 10,000 so they also understand i i reflect on all of that and because i am handmade and because i am the em- the closest thing to the emperor i i just can't go about killing this Really annoying Inquisitor. It'd be bad for our image. Even though I... Oh, my goodness. They wouldn't see it coming. They think, could not stand a chance. Think about the PR nightmare. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to wash blood off of this armor? hmm And they they kind of... They... Okay. Here's the thing. Because this is something that does come up. Could they beat a Primarch? Probably not. I'll be honest. Some of them are really mean in the ring. Not much can beat a Primarch in the ring. However, you know, if we pick the literal single weakest one and pick the literal strongest custodies ever... They're going to have a hard time. It's possible. It's po- I'm, I'm talking if you pick the... Of the 20 sons, you pick probably Alpharius or Omegon because they're really intelligent, but if you put them in a boxing ring... Oh. Their strong suit isn't one-to-one combat. E- exactly. And then you they're take... They're really good at the, the CIA shenanigans. Oh, like, they're oh, going no. they're going to MK Ultra you, and your life will be gone. It's, mm-hmm. it's it. But, uh-huh. I, I mean, you stick a knife in them. Is it? It's Is it. it. And you take the literal strongest custodies ever. It's winnable with prep time. We're going to use a prep time argument. Because that is how you quickly smooth over all of that. <laughs> I still it, think it'd be a Primark win, but they'd be like, they'd be mauled afterwards. Well, Valdor is one of the strongest custodies ever, and he's gone even with Horus when sparring. So, so, hmm. yeah. These are the Emperor's confidants, dude. Hmm. These are the... I I need to send somebody who can get results. One of these 10,000 has to be able to. 
Well, so do you see Horus? Horus? Yeah, Horus. Not not fully chaos empowered. And no, obvi- obviously, obviously, no, not. No, 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 obviously no, no, not. No. I don't think a custodius is going to beat someone with all four chaos gods Mm-mm. looking directly Mm-mm. at them. Mm-mm. No, but no, not at all. Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> they got a little bit more sauce than I thought they did. <laughs> Actually, I think this is something written by Alpharius too. So take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> I I do think he's even beaten Alpharius in a sparring match. I think I th- again, this is said by Alpharius himself. And so he could just be going... All of his books begin with, tales. I am a Ferris, this is a lie, I am a Ferris, this is a lie. So, that could have happened, that could not have happened. I'm not sure. <laughs> it could It could have yet to have happened. Yeah, and and actually, fun fact about the Custodes and the Alpha Legion, they actually have a, like a really fun thing going on. Do they? Uh, hmm, fun's not the correct word. <laughs> We're gonna go with fun regardless. Uh... Because Alpharius decided to try and fake an assassination attempt on the Emperor. <laughs> and by fake, I mean try his damnness to do it. And it was a custodian's job to freak out and try and stop that to the best of their ability. And uh, he, Valdor is not amused by this. Let me just tell you that right now. I, I would figure. However, it did start a very important tradition, which is the Blood Games. Where they, they try and pen test the... the, the uh, Imperial Palace mm. to protect, like the, the, to protect the Emperor, and sometimes it's it's custodies have to try and break in and get to the Emperor, and I believe there's one custodies who's done it twice in a row. Really? Yeah, back to back. Do you see why their numbers are retired? Y- yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it, it was that's how the blood game started, and so sometimes it's uh, you split the teams down the middle. Custodies try and take on other custodies because think about it; these are some of the best tacticians the Imperium has. If if they're if anyone's gonna find a way to beat them, it's gonna be them. Or sometimes what they'll do, and I love this, is they'll just go off and kidnap Chaos Space Marines and then let them loose. <laughs> and just watch them. <laughs> just cause. They will straight up kidnap I think it's the Iron Warriors. Yeah, it was the Iron Warriors. They will kidnap Iron Warriors Legionnaires and then just let them loose. Because those are the guys who would seethe mold and cope enough to try. D- despite being clearly outclassed they would see the cope grit their teeth and try and get to the emperor every single time even though they are certain they're to not lose. they're not gonna win and this has been happening for the last ten thousand years so as you can imagine the imperial palace is real secure yeah it's really secure not impenetrable but secure but really secure yeah it's very very safe the only thing they really do struggle with are anything psychic because they are the best a human can be not the best a human psyker can be. Yeah, which is a, <laughs> which is a different a, thing. A very key key difference. But that's why they're paired with the Sisters of Silence, the best blanks the Imperium has to offer. Because, okay, cool, you have weird warp chicanery going on around you. No, you didn't. <laughs> and now there's this brick wall of a man charging you with a steel beam. What are you gonna do? Deal with it. What are you gonna do? So it's they they have a really fun pairing. A lot of the time. And the most impressive thing about the Sisters of Silence is they can keep up with the Custodes. I'm not quite sure how, frankly, but they do. They don't get... Because think about They're fighting side by side. Yeah. And the Custodes are faster than a human can see, pretty much. So, bare minimum, you got to be able to at least be three quarters of that just to keep up with the dude. Because your job is to kind of just sit there and act as an EMP against everything. Yeah. And then let him do all the legwork, so... They have to be fairly competent. They, and they usually are. They usually are really, really competent, actually. Yeah. My favorite one, we've covered this in the Patreon episode. Um, Janisha Kroll. Janisha Kroll, who was such a powerful blank, you couldn't see her. She's I'm actually not joking. fully invisible. She had a really sad death, too. Yeah, she, she was, did. She was hard invisible, so the only reason she, we even knew she died is, like, Karn's kill count went up. Because, okay, listen. Th- <sighs> Angron's Legion is Angron's Legion. They worship corn, of course. Of course, they have a stat track on they their have kills. A, they have an internal. They have an internal. Like you know, the stat tracker on the side of your guns in Titanfall Two. They've just got one on like their arm or something. I think it's in their visor. I think it's in their visor. You think it's in their visor? Yeah, but if anyone would, it's totally them. It's totally. I don't know. Them. I like the. I like the image of like just a, a a shoddily wired like screen into their arms, just like oh that went up by one. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> oh, that went up by one. Oh, well, I don't know how that happened. See, at least at least Angron's Legion gets the joy of seeing the number go up. That's that's very satisfying. Every kill you get makes the number get bigger. That's really fun. Corn loves that. They love that. It's a great time. They're at least having fun. For all the pros the custodies have to themselves, who are they sad about it? <laughs> Oh my goodness, are they so sad about it? Because at least for your average Imperial peasant, this is all they've ever known. This is all they've ever known, and because of very, very, very effective Imperial propaganda, this is how it's always been. This is great. It couldn't be any better. So, despite things being objectively the worst they've ever been, most people just, eh, it is what it is. And to be fair, it's, <clears throat> it's been such a long time, it's very easy for things to just leave memory. Yeah, it, it, it is what it is, but the custodies remember it all. They were and there. They, and they don't just remember back when the Imperium was better. They remember back when the Emperor would share his vision for how it could be even better than it is now. And so they, for the last 10,000 years, while stuck mostly on Earth, have been watching that dream wither and rot away. And in, unlike pretty much everyone else who could be vaguely aware of this, they were the only ones who could have prevented it. It was their job to protect the Emperor, and they couldn't. So they are not doing too hot mentally. They're Yay. they're up there with Gilliman when it comes to just depression. Just like, oh God, why am I still? Why do I still live? Yeah, it's, <laughs> a lot of it is why do I still live? Um, and and they, well, I'll be honest, if the emperor was gone, I don't. I don't think that they've... that that question would get a lot more existential. Yeah. <laughs> And and this even goes to, like, they'll be fighting with uh, humans. And, you know, the, they are not cold and callous machines. So, okay, that human's getting cold. I'm fine because I'm perfect in every way. Here, have this cloak. And the, the, the guardsman immediately, or I think it's a sister. It's a guardsman or a sister, one of the two. They immediately go, oh, I cannot accept such a cloak from the venerated emperor's weapon. I could not. You are present in all of his artworks. You are the closest you have ever been. I could never take such a holy record. And he literally takes his cloak, rips it in half. It's a cloak. Take it. <laughs> they, they also get the weird religious fervor that the emperor has. Mm -hmm. Except unlike the emperor who's interred on a throne and can't do anything about it, they can. They hate it. I'm not some divine being. I'm not. He's not God. I mean, they were. It's just a tarp. Take it. A lot of them were there with him to chat with him about it, and they were probably talking shit about the 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 entire imperial religion. Mm -hmm. they, they're they, just like. I mean, think about it. They were deployed with Lorgar specifically to prevent this from becoming a thing. Mm -hmm. They did not want the imperial cult to become as bad as it's gotten. I'd imagine now they're just like petty about it. Just like, oh. it, there's there's a lot for the custodies to be mad about, mm -hmm. and they're constantly reminded. Because think about it. My job is to protect the emperor. My job is to protect the emperor. Oh my god, I failed at it. It's fine. It'll never happen again. It'll never happen again. Smash cut ten thousand years later. It happens again. Okay, fine. Sure. Sure. Okay, so the problems can get to me. Whatever. I'll be deployed out and I will deal with them before they ever get here. That is great. You arrive to a battlefield surrounded by peasantry and their first act is not, okay, how can we use this to the best of our ability? It's bow before the emperor's greatest weapon, his guardian, his spear. And you're just like, ah. Can we get do can away we, with the exultations can yeah, we just please. can we just get the job done he of Listen, a thousand they're names. encroaching you're bowing at me and they're pushing yeah it, shoot it, they <laughs> God, they have a lot they have a lot chafing them they have a lot yeah. chafing them Understandably. sometimes it's even the primarchs themselves because they were around for quite a while and i'll be honest kind of don't some of them some of them kind of don't like space marines that much Really? No. Because no. A, dude, I'm perfect in every way. I have the single heart that beats perfectly. You are some weirdo kid who got 10 organs crammed into you and are clearly not stable. You have to think about it. They've seen the Emperor create a super soldier, use it to its fullest extent, and then have them kill it. So it's not that far of a leap for the custodians to go, oh, this is just the next Thunder Warriors. We'll wait. We'll wait. And I... I know for a fact I'm a match for at least five of you, so I'll just wait. He's he's gonna call on me eventually. I I know my place. I, I know what I do for a living. I don't know what you think. You, I don't know what you think you do, but you keep doing it. Listen, I'll wait. Listen, 
I I am an actual person. You are a weapon. Mm-hmm. Know your place. Some, some. Again, they, and you can easily see why they get that way. And then imagine from those guys' perspective where they're like, okay, so this is just Thunder Warriors too. We'll just wait it out. Once this great crusade is over, you know, we'll just turn on them and, well, we'll wait for the order. And then, you know, we'll do what we've always done. We'll be by the Emperor's side, whatever. Moving on. I mean, these Primer kids might get to stick around, but we'll see. Uh, and then those inferior copies of you Split in half and kill the emperor. Oh, that'd peeve me. That'd peeve me. And then, and then, after ten thousand years of just going to therapy and trying to get over this, one of his kids who caused this comes back and goes, "I can fix the whole Imperium. Trust me." <laughs> and the custodians are now in this weird middle ground where some are like. Oh, Gilman was one of the few good ones. Thank God. This one could actually think. This is the one we needed. Thank God. <laughs> and then others are like, so was Horace. Horace could think too. You guys are seeing the same thing I'm seeing, Horace's, right? Horace's thinking is what got us into this mess in the first place. I, I can't imagine how crazy those custodians must feel in this moment, watching everyone just fawn over Gilman, and they go, do you not remember Horace? Because here's the thing about Horus, it's really easy to hear the heresy, and you think, oh, yes, he was just a villain from the get-go. He was bald, he was frowning, It was you could tell. It's like Jason Statham in any movie ever. You can tell he's exactly what's going to happen here, mm-hmm. right? But no, Horus was actually really kind and likable. That's how the heresy got as bad as it did, because a lot of the time, somebody will say, Horus has betrayed the Emperor, and someone will go, <laughs> okay, dude. Really? All right, dude, what's next, there's Sky's this, Green? There's this really cool piece of art that I use quite frequently for showing the uh, progression of his uh, um, his downfall, his yeah. insanity, and it's really, really good, because it shows him balding, um, but no. <laughs> it shows him balding. <laughs> it starts off with a piece in the middle, and he is looking very regal, very heroic, very like young like upstart like i'm going to be i'm going to be the hero that the imperium needs and then the one to the left he's not grizzled but you know he's bald um and he's looking a little bit more general like regal generalish like i am the very model of a modern major general mm-hmm. i'm the very model of a modern major general but then the uh... one to the like right of all of these panels is just him just full chaos out eyes burning red the weird glow that the, his armor seems to have the underglow from his head that the armor seems to have <laughs> pale skinned and yes. just like crazy looking it's just like okay this does a really good job of showing he was a very respected and very like valiant person before the whole chaos corruption thing exactly you have to remember the 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 whole <clears throat> you see the, the the family picture of like the emperor and his 20 kids and it's really easy to lose the fact that they were kind of like a family there for a little bit. They were sibling rivalries. People bickered all the time. And Horus was the only brother who was liked by everyone. Everyone had like a little bit of beef with everyone, you know? Like, Lorgar kind of hated Gilman because of everything going on. The, you know, petty sibling rivalries did if exist. It was, um, it was, uh... It was Ferris, Manus, and Fulgrim, right? Who had the 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 mm-hmm. the, the forge off? Yeah. Like they 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 fought about like who is the best forge master, and instead of like stabbing each other over it, they just like let's make the best weapon we can and see whose is better. And yeah. then the, in the end, they were both like, "Oh my god, that guy's his is better." Oh no, mine is stupid. And the other one would be like, "Oh my god, that's better." Oh, his is, oh. Do you want to just trade? <laughs> it's and and that's the thing. It's like you see that they kind of functioned really well, like a family, and you can see the vision that they had with Horus at the front of it. It's easy to see why he was chosen. He was beloved by everyone, even the workaholic control freak of the emperor. He was the glue. Yeah, and then it turned bad, and so a lot of custodians have seen that. And they must feel the highest order of crazy when they're telling these people who they see eye to eye with, their peers, I know you have perfect memory, because I do. I I know it for a fact. Are you forgetting the previous, very likable, very intelligent, very tactically brilliant one, what he did? Are we just going to... Okay, (laughs) sure. We're just going to rally behind that 2.0. Okay, sweet. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever. I will go do my job... Ah, it must be agonizing for those custodians. They are the most depressed right now. However, the other ones are much happier. I will say that. Yeah. 
And now they've gotten a lot more new gigs. They've gotten a lot more fun stuff to do. Yeah, because they've been set loose, haven't they? Yes, I mentioned this in the Patreon episode, but uh, whenever... Because Gilman came back, he reformed a bunch of the Imperium, he created Space Marines Squared, and the Space Marines Squared have to get places somehow. He ships them via Amazon Prime, and by that I mean the custodies. <laughs> because that's, that's actually really fitting, because... Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, because a lot of Space Marines are kind of traditional at times. Uh, they don't like change very much, and the whole concept of reworking the Space Marine formula is a little, it's a little bit dubious. Yeah, because it, it is Gilliman basically saying I can improve on Dad's work, which not everyone is on board with. However, when the living embodiment of Dad's work shows up, the Custodes, and says, "Here you go, take this, reinforce yourself." Here I go, take this. I guess I'm reinforcing myself. It's it's it it serves double duty. For those who are skeptical of like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We were made by the god emperor of mankind. You you, you there's nothing better. There's the custodians there to uh you know, sate that religious fervor of just like no, no, no. This is the this is his will. Just t- take them. Take mm-hmm. them. Just take them. Or for the people who are violent and say no, 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 no. No, no, no. We're the best. No, 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 no. You have, you know, the gun lances point at you. Immediately. Immediately. Um, Just take them. And also, there's also the, the very valid fear that... Because think about it. Space Marines have been the augmented top dogs for a while. Because I mean, they don't run into custodies very often. Yeah. So they have been the augmented top dogs for quite a while. It's a little disconcerting. Like if I had a bunch of augmentations and I was that guy for a little bit. And then I saw, oh, well, that kid just got a bunch of new stuff that I never got. And he's kind of working better than I do. You're going to start to wonder, okay, are they going to retire me? Like, am I, gonna... is the sun, am I being sunset? <laughs> Uh, is that what's coming? So there's a lot of very valid, weird feelings the uh, Space Marines have about their newer, younger siblings, but their older, better siblings are there to assuage them, whether it be with a steel beam or not. Wh- whichever whichever way it works, it works. Uh, they, there's also the, the Aquilin Shield. Uh, these guys will get a vision about somebody who's about to do an important thing, or, or this person will do an important thing at some point for the Imperium. It is very important. They'll just leave to protect them. And so suddenly, and it could be anything. It's not just some high-ranking dignitary. It could be a guardsman who's someday going to be in command of a massive assault that will win multiple worlds. And suddenly just a custodian has appeared silently and will protect you from anything and everything until that is done and then they'll leave. And so you you could be, you, imagine you sign up for boot camp and then MI6 starts following you around. <laughs> De facto, for the next 30 years of your career, as you're shooting through the ranks, MI6 has got your back. And then you do one thing that's really, really important, they all disappear. And suddenly, you have to think, because think about it, you've been under MI6's protection for like 30 years now, dude. Are you really that good at self-defense anymore? <laughs> this, is a cust- <laughs> this is a custodies we're talking about. There's a good chance any threat to you, you never saw. Yeah, it just... If, if there were assassination attempts on you, they were stopped in the planning. Somebody would put something on a chalkboard and then they die. So are you really that good at defending yourself? Or have you just been defended? Exactly. And so that's the downside to that is this is really cool custodians who showed up silently to protect me for most of my days until I do the important thing. And then he's off to the next assignment. But wait, hey, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I think my favorite one I saw is somebody who's about to be executed, and then his uh, custodians appeared. Obviously, you can't execute him anymore. <laughs> Obviously, you can't. That's just not. I mean, you can try. You, you can. You can. You can s- certainly try. You can certainly try. So this person goes through their whole career, flies through the ranks, accomplishes that one very important, decisive thing that only he could have accomplished, per the custodians' vision. And then the custodies leaves, and the execution starts. <laughs> because the Imperium is run by very petty individuals. Fine, okay, the custodies are protecting you. Cool, I can wait. I, it's not forever. I'll still be here. I'll still be here. You are not outliving me, you young woman. Sharpening my axe. <laughs> yeah. And so the custodies leaves, immediately the execution order is reinstated. And... That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there was also like shock troop custodies. Uh, and the, the, okay, here's the thing about shock troop custodies. It's really, we have deployed a custodies. It's very shocking. 
that's kind of it. That's there's not much more you need to do to an enemy to instill deep primal fear than just bye. Is that a glint of gold on the? Ho- oh no! <laughs> it's it is it is to quote directly. It's to slaughter the enemy's warriors and reduce their war engines to wreckage. That is their job. It's to cast down false idols and then set them aflame while toppling cities and sundering strongholds. It is very much a simple and swift reminder that you cannot screw with the Imperium. There is nothing that will... There is... It's You know those signs uh, in deep, deep caves underwater where it'll say, do not go beyond this point. There's nothing worth dying for. There's nothing of value here, yeah. Yeah, I specifically love the verbiage. There's nothing here worth dying for. Yeah. That's the message these custodians are sending. I know the exact specific cave, because I got, like, really into cave diving stories a couple couple, couple months back. Yeah. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. So you don't remember the actual name. But I do remember the cave. It's uh, two people of the... uh, two or three have passed down there because one went down in like the early 1900s for a dive got trapped in something some part of the cave Mm -hmm. and then uh, his body was never recovered and then somebody went cave diving down that same cave found the body down there and was like this needs to be recovered because obviously you know respect for the dead recover their bodies and do what you will need to with them and then he went down there, and in his mission to recover that guy's body, Again. he went down there and passed. Yeah, it's nothing. Sometimes it's just. Sometimes the sign's telling the truth, is yeah. what I will say. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. the sign is just telling you the truth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's that's what these custodians serve as the big, dangerous sign. There's nothing of value here. And then there's the, there's the typical, the default custodians. They're the ones who stay on Earth. The motionless statues until, oh, there's a fly. Nope. Imagine the British Royal Guards on as many steroids as you can put them on. No. Really? British Royal Guard to perfection. Again, not augmented. This is not, it's not, oh, this is the most a human being can do if we, if we augment them externally. No, this is the best Gillette, the best a man can get. That's, that's what they are. Okay. (laughs) It's not sponsored. I don't use Gillette products, by the way, so don't come at me. I mean, you're right. And I think I had it on the money earlier when I said this is space marines are augmented. Custodians yeah, no, are were, min-maxed. You were, you were correct. You were fully correct. Um, however, like I said, it's a very important gig. They understand that any margin of error will result in probably the whole Imperium falling apart. <laughs> so mm, that was a second too slow. They'll retire. When that happens, they become the eyes of the Emperor. It's a really, really cool gig where they are still a full-blown custodies. <laughs> they are still horrifying. <laughs> They're just like a second slower than a prime custodies. That's pretty much it. And they just serve as eyes or ears. Sometimes it's sometimes it's also more severe than just, oh, I'm I'm a little bit slower. Because, you know, custodies get deployed to battles. Custodies do die or get gravely wounded. They lose limbs. And so sometimes you'll see this very grizzled, massive figure cloaked, just observing. I was going to say, how are they going to be secret spy eyes and ears when they're like nine feet tall? Well, because they will know if you've made them. And the best kind of stealth is no survivors. So you're still unseen if there's nobody living to tell the tale. All I can imagine, all I can imagine is like a noir film, like a a PI just like writing in his journal, black and white, just like... "Mm." Yesterday, I, ta- I tailed the target to a bar to listen to what he had to say about her, the crime scene. And it's just like a nine foot tall dude in a trench coat following like a normal human, anxious, kind of like <laughs> waddling through the street like, <laughs> I'm being tailed by a nine foot man. <laughs> dude, you have no idea how right on the money you are. I would, <laughs> I would saw an arm off. For a gritty crime drama where you see one of these older, like old grizzled custodies, but their mind's still there, you know, Mm -hmm. working as some kind of detective, slowly building up a network to inform his brothers back home about what's good. Because that's what they do. That's their whole gig. It's to Mm -hmm. spy and they build networks of people to get that done because they're still custodies. It's still rather awe inspiring to see one. And I'll be honest, if one showed up and was like, I need your help. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Don't kill me. (laughs) Don't do not kill me. Sure. And I would, I would love a, a kind of gritty noir drama of an old wounded custodian. So he clearly can't fight anymore, mm. but it's still a custodian. And you see him trying to crack the case with his iron mind. Like, oh, oh, that'd be so cool. 
Oh, I had I had not thought about that until just now. That could go, but here's the thing: that could go two ways, and both would be awesome. That could be played entirely straight, and it's like a huge mystery novel that's awesome, mm-hmm. or it could be played off as a comedy because how is this nine foot tall man going to fit himself into the weird social self situations that a detective needs to be? In? It depends. There are some areas. In the, there are some areas that are really sketchy. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. You know. There's, there's the outer, outer, outer far reaches of space where it's like, dude, there's, there's, there's a lot happening here. That guy's tall, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've worked with someone who's seven feet tall. <laughs> now, he wasn't like seven feet tall in Jack, but like, you know, he was seven feet tall. You just kind of adjust at a certain point, even though they are really, it's jarring the first time. Trust me. You just go. Uh. <laughs> but that's quite literally what I did. I remember rounding a corner. And looking, and I was like, okay, that's not right. When is this going to stop? No, no, oh, no. oh, it's, it's not going to stop. Okay, it's cool. like that. It's like that. It's like that scene from Shrek when, like, uh, uh, Shrek is questioning Donkey of, like, is there anything weird about me? And you get that full camera pan up Shrek, and it's just like, you're really, really tall. <laughs> that's it. I mean, a really tall guy is not in and of itself that sketchy. It could just, and plus, this is the Imperium, dude. They can make space marines. Okay, so what? Maybe he's an old space marine. Whatever. They fail. Moving on. I have more important things to deal with. Okay? I don't care. I have a wheat to farm. I have mm-hmm. a quota to make. Or maybe he's on stilts. I don't really care that much. Okay? Maybe he's on stilts. Maybe he's on stilts. It's not my he problem. He fills out the trench coat. Maybe he's the world's buffest. You know those guys at the circus the with the trench stilts? Coat is, the trench coat is glued to his biceps. You can see every inch of muscle through them. Yeah, well, you know, I'm running out of excuses here, okay? What matters is these guys somehow spy. And my favorite thing about them is because they're, they're still custodians. Like I said, it's a pretty uh, flat hierarchy. They're all, they all understand we're that guy. We we are the we are the greatest of all time in our chosen field. It's not I am that guy. It's we are that guy. Exactly. And so a lot of the time they'll they'll, they'll spy. They'll discover something that is very important, and then they'll say, "Hey, this is a threat to Earth." And then like the proper custodians will show up. And I would love nothing more than just you know like the grizzled detective, and he solves the mystery, and then suddenly the most horrifying things in the galaxy show up and kill it <laughs> faster than you can cope, and you go, "What?" What was that? What did that? What did that? What was that? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see a thing. It says the nine foot tall man. <laughs> Who can only move marginally slower than that. <laughs> they are they are so much fun. Much like everything in the Imperium, there is a flavor of custodies out there for you with a gig. We didn't even cover them all. There are some who are solely in charge of guarding the Emperor's browser history. I'm not joking. There is a basement. There is stuff in there nobody should see. And the sketchy thing about it is <laughs> the galaxy ripped in half and the Emperor's Mac booted up. And it's logging in by itself and it's vanished now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Where'd so it go? we need to find that. We need to find that now. <laughs> so th- there are people who are in charge of guarding the Emperor's sketchy stuff. There are people in charge of guarding the... Because uh, Emperor, one of the Emperor's hobbies was making stuff. Why do you think every Primarch comes back with a new weapon of the Emperor? <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. Because he's got just like a magic emperor, Imperial toy chest in the in the basement. Pretty much. I mean, the guy had to have hobbies. Think about it. He was as long-lived as a human can get. There is a certain point where it's just... Because, okay... Here's the thing. You're conquering the galaxy. Okay, cool. That's a very big endeavor. You still need to get places. And this isn't a Uber ride, you know? This isn't 30 minutes or where there. It's it's going to be about a week, dude. Yeah. So pick up a book. Do something. And so, Take up a hobby. And so there's a lot of stuff in the Emperor's basement that really should just stay there. Uh, the only people who should see it are custodians and maybe his kids. Yeah. <clears throat> Sketchy thing is... Some of that stuff's vanished now, (laughs) and we're not sure how. Where to go? So that's great. Uh, There's a lot of yeah. If there's if there's any flavor of gig you would like a custodian to do, they have done it, and it is almost always fun. The custodians are (sighs) on the tabletop and off. They are very, very, very popular, and it's very, very, very easy to see why. I mean, first of all, off the tabletop, they're incredibly cool. And then on the tabletop, they're really, really well represented. Uh, hold on, I have it jotted down here somewhere, um, because everything on the tabletop has points, right? And they, they do a really good job of showing 
the importance of custodies by having their, because they're also cheap, relatively speaking, uh, by having their point value really show off how strong they are. Um, because a lot of 40K armies, like, you know, the guard and stuff, cost about one quarter's worth of tuition. <laughs> Do the math on that. I'm not wrong. And because of that, 40K is very cost prohibitive sometimes. <laughs> it's it's really cost prohibitive sometimes. I mean, sometimes. when you consider all of the guard models that you need to buy, all of the paints that you need to buy, the the the, the set pieces, the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the maps, mm-hmm. and then the codices. Yeah. For, for a full 2,000, okay, to give you a sense of scale, a full army, roughly 2,000 points, um, a single guardsman, five to six points. Count those models real quick. Do the math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, just do do the arithmetic on that real quick. Um, yeah. And then a single basic space marine is about 17 points. So mm. think about it. Fewer space marines, technically a cheaper army. Yeah. Just and then the, you calculate it about. The space marine is probably about three to four times the mm, normal person. Yeah, it makes, that makes, that makes sense. sense. That makes sense. A custodian is worth 50 points. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And there's that... That just describes them perfectly. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, you will. The the you will not need many models to be a full custodian's army. Downside is, who when you lose one, do you feel it? Oh yeah. Oh man, because you don't have that many. It's like ah. You've lost a whole chunk. Yeah, like, you've lost that's a, a chunk, chunk. Yeah, and and so it's it's made them very popular on the tabletop because it's a very good starter army. Mm-hmm. And unlike a lot of things where the starter army is bad, the starter the starting army the starting army of custodians is pretty badass. It's about as badass as you can get, frankly. So they are very, very popular for those reasons, and that is why I am a huge fan of them. You pair that with the new writings they've been getting, where we're getting to see more of their how they've been reacting to the the heresy and its long term effects, mm-hmm. the very weird position that they're in relative to it, because they actually they're not steeped in the imperial dogma. They know how it went down and how the the different ways they've kind of learned how to cope about it. Where some are hopeful, it'll happen again, don't worry, things will get better, and others are completely, nope, we have botched it, and I'm never going to let it happen, I'm never going to let it get any worse than it already has. It's so much fun. And no matter, because here's the thing about 40k, things power fluctuates really hard, depending on who's writing. Yeah. Um, like really hard. The custodies are very consistent. Because it, it seems like a hard line where, no, these guys cannot lose. There's not that many of them. Do not screw around. Mm-hmm. Do not screw around and kill too many. <laughs> the, these are the guys who, in canon, when they show up, it's it's logged as a victory immediately. So they, they also tend to be fairly consistent power-wise, which is kind of a feat. Now, that consistency comes at the expense of other people's favorite armies, but, you know, <laughs> million tyrannids, so what? Yeah. <laughs> it just happens sometimes. <laughs> um, and, and so that's why I really, really love the custodies. But that does bring an end to this. What do you think of them? I have always really liked the custodies. I don't know. Maybe it's just the big golden armor, as uh, people could probably assume from uh, my 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 adoration of uh, Warframe's art style. I really like gold in places that like you oh, know. You must love the emperors. I'll and dude, I, I I I love the weird golden stuff they have going on. Mm-hmm. I think maybe it could be tuned back a little bit, a little bit, but it's, it's, a bit it's, much. Not, it's not. It's not bad. It's not a bit bad. Much. It's not bad. I've always loved the custodians just out of sheer. They seem a bit more human than space marines. Like even if you look at the art direction, you'll notice space marines are like big, bulky, wide. They look like ever. If you took, they look the, like a Ford. You look like a. F- they really do look like an F one fifty. You look, you look like if they look like if you put two Sam Suliks together, yeah, into one person, and it's just, it's just a bit insane. It's like it's it's weird. Yeah. But then you look at like uh, custodies, and they're they're scaled like people. They're scaled like humans. It, it looks like it, if somebody grabbed the corner of the image and pulled it up instead of grabbing the side of the image and pulled the, it sideways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they they're scaled properly. They they're scaled like humans and. Because they seem to have like a more, uh, I get it, I get it. They're nine foot tall, huge, long living, insanely powerful people, but they just seem a little bit more grounded than space marines. Because space marines seem very, I am a weapon of the emperor. I am going to do this and this and that and this and this and that. And the 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 custodians, just from everything I've been described, they've 
they seem to have more like human human like thought patterns than space marines. It it really does depend on the marine mm-hmm. because some of them are really not human, yeah, and some of them are very touchingly human, you know, mm-hmm. like and even for every and it also depends on the individual because for every for every hyper efficient ultramarine who thinks in the way of Gilliman, there is one who will go whoa 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 guys come on well let's just let's just listen can we take we, we need to take we a can break roll day. it back we don't have to do we don't have to do theoretical practicals for everything listen come on. Efi- efficiency means that we need to take at least one rest day so that we can maintain things yeah. let's maintain our brains and take a mental health day yeah <laughs> that that dude, the ultramarines need to hear that because for them it's they see a girl theoretical ask her out practical I lose time dating. <laughs> That's a fact, by the way. I don't care. <laughs> Theoretical ask her out. Practical. She says no. It hurts my feelings. Throws off my lift. <laughs> so sometimes they do need to be reined in a bit. I totally agree. But yeah, the custodians are very fun. And I truly do hope we see more from their perspective. Frankly, I want to see... Because we've gotten the, the real scale and dread of Space Marines animated really well. I want to see the scale and dread of, of a Custodes. A single one. Animated really well. I would love to see that. But, like almost everything 40k, I don't think it's going to translate well in live action. No. Only because... Okay, because here's the thing. It's Space Marine armor works, and it does look cool in live action. The problem is moving it. Mm-hmm. The problem is moving it. And a lot of the time, why things in live action don't look very good is because you're going to rely on a ton of CGI, and that gets expensive quickly, and things are good. Budgets... It, everything has a budget, dude. As, everything has a budget. As, and we can't blow it on five seconds of a custodian just decimating everything. As somebody who grew up reading, like, um... Uh, the Hunger Games and 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 the Percy Jackson series and a bunch of other like uh, movies that got really really bad, um, or somebody who grew up reading books that got really really bad movie adaptations. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really just kind of a problem with with film when you're trying to adapt like written media. Is nothing will nothing that you can record onto a screen will ever match the uh um i get it this word gets thrown around mimetic image that happens in your head yeah yeah it's tragic whatever that whatever however you envision the things that you see on a piece of paper that is i don't care what you say about being excited for a film adaptation that is the best image that you're ever going to have against that and you're only going to be disappointed by anything you see on film honestly Whenever I hear, oh, this is getting a film adaptation, I immediately lose interest. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see it's getting an animated adaptation than anything else because you because can Because get... at least animated, you can suspend your disbelief a little bit. Not even suspend. Okay, I'll, I'll be fair with the Space Marines. I think the best way you could do Space Marines is live action because it could come off really disconcerting. There's a way you can make Space Marine movement in real life and then it, it, it looks wrong on purpose. You know what I mean? And by wrong in like a... Oh, that shouldn't move that fast kind of way. And so I'm okay with that. That one I am excited for. The one thing that I see in a lot of Space Marine adaptations, I think the one that actually gets away with it is the um, the the Astartes fan animation. Mm-hmm. No animation seems to get the speed right. Like even 40K, like uh, Games Workshop official uh, animations don't seem to get the speed right because just of how bulky they look, they seem to just stick with the bulky slow lumbering speed in their animations like and i've seen in the astartes animation there's a, there's a scene where a space marine is full tilt sprinting and at it's something horrifying and it's horrifying because it's, it's moving so, so fast scary i but, love it but then you look at like official animations and they just they, they lumber they really lumber well for me i, I love I and love... i think with like a 2d animated film mm-hmm. about the, the 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 space marines you could really do well with with how it how it looks honestly i'm gonna get in trouble for this one if anything could probably get what okay primark's fighting for sure but custody's fighting give it to give it to one of the studios that handles like big shonen fights yeah i i, I yeah. think i'm gonna get in trouble for that but at bare minimum primark's fighting i I'm, I'm not gonna hear it that one needs to be animated because the scale of the blood it's ours when primark's fight it's a matter of hours yeah 
And so I feel like if you, if you gave it to one of those Japanese studios that is really good at this and they're very creative, I would I would I think that would be the this best. This is way you this do is it. our hot take for the day. The best piece of space the best piece of Warhammer 40k media would be an anime. Okay, well not not full bore anime I don't think, but I think if you want to do the fights, you do correctly. the fights, the animated yeah, fights. Yeah, like well, the animated it would, fights it would, would be best. an anime. I, I do I still maintain Space Marines would work. Space I would say Custodies and up, I'm with you. Space Marines and down, I'd like to see uh I'd like to see human just cuz I really do feel like you can there's there's some very creative directors out there. If 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 you're setting out with the vision to make this uncomfortable for viewers, make this large, massive weapon uncomfortable for viewers to watch, I feel like there's the best way you can wind up in the uncanny trenches where space marines lie is to use real life. See, Just because we, you know, the human brain is very good at seeing real life physics and going, mm, that's, I know how things operate. I'm not going to do the math behind it, but I know how things operate in real life. That's concerning. See, but the problem is, the problem is, the edge, the edge between, the edge between uncanny and uncomfortable is, is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a sharp blade, it's a sharp blade of Japanese steel folded over a thousand times. <laughs> I, 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 I it, it's so hard to strike that balance, and especially when you're doing something that moves fast like that, it's such a pain in the ass not to get uh the flash scenario where look at the flash sprinting in a lot of the new like cg live action movies and it's just it's, it's not uncomfortable and it's not like oh he shouldn't be moving it's fat that fast it's that just looks wrong that's just bad we will see who agrees with me. You, I mean, <laughs> agrees with me. Well, usually people do because I'm right in these situations. Regardless, thank you so much for tuning in. The options, as always, are Malkador. Well, not as always, but for this episode. Malkador, the White Scars, and the Raven Guard. Vote in the comments, and we will see you next week for somebody. It's probably going to be Malkador, dude. I'm not going to lie. I mean, they were really so close. close for the last poll. This, was, this one was literally a coin flip. Yeah. So we'll see you then. And as always, thank you for being you.